Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. <clears throat> I've been a family therapist for 31 years, and I've studied us humans for seven decades or more. Um, I'm real interested in helping people strengthen their families, people like you. If you care about your family and how it functions, and or if you think that your family is having significant problems now. I want to summarize for you six effective tools that you can learn to use to help resolve your problems, avoid problems, and raise the nurturance level of your family. Um, these tools can be used by anyone. They're often used by therapists, but they can be used by anybody. There's nothing special about them uh, any more than learning to use a table saw or learning how to cook a souffle. So you can use these tools if you choose. I'm going to tell you where to find detailed information on each tool. The first of six tools I want to summarize for you is my nonprofit educational website. There are six sequential lessons self-study lessons, online lessons, that I think every adult on the planet ought to take, because in my biased opinion, most people don't know what they don't know and need to know. So your first resource in strengthening your family is to commit time to invest time studying lessons one through six, if you have kids in your family, one through five if you don't. Education is one of the best resources you can gather for yourself and your family members. Um, I'll give you the uh, uh, web address where you can locate these lessons. It's sfhelp.org. This is an ad-free, non-commercial educational site. The only thing I'm selling there is information. The second resource I want to point out to you is a concept. It's called Family Systems. I've made a video that explains it. Um, it's on YouTube. You can find it among my Gersakin channel uh, videos. Family Systems is a systematic way of looking at how families are put together and how they operate. They include looking at family subsystems, relationships, rules, roles, and boundaries, and whether family systems are stable or not. You can learn a lot from using family systems concepts to assess your own family and how it's operating. I'm going to give you the web address of an article that can tell you all about family systems concepts. The third tool is one that is often used by family therapists and or sociologists. It sounds a little highfalutin, but it's really not. Um, it's called a genogram, as in geno, um, genetic diagram of people's ancestry. It can usually include three generations of people. It uses a simple set of symbols to represent uh, males and females marriages, offsprings, death, alliances, and other important information. It's useful to make this family diagram. It's a, it's a map, a one-page map symbolizing how your family is put together, who belongs, and some facts about how they relate to each other. Um, it's especially useful for large families or complex families like step families. So this is a resource called a genogram or a sociogram. Here's the address of where you can read about how to make one and what to do with it. The fourth resource I want to alert you to is similar to a genogram. It also is a schematic way of diagramming one home or several related homes in a family, as in a divorced family, 
where a child shuttles back and forth between mom's house and dad's house. In that case, the nuclear family is composed of two, all the people who live in two related homes. This resource is called a structural map. It's a diagram of the people that live in a given house or related homes, and it uh, is focused on a horizontal line and who among the family members are above the line in other words who makes the decisions and who's below the line who follows the decisions uh, structural maps are useful in pointing out and discovering some things you weren't really aware of about who really runs this family who's in charge or is there anyone in charge are there communication blocks between certain members in a given home or between two homes are people excluded from a family even though they may live in the house are there dead people who are influencing or even le leading how a family or home operates? So structural maps can be surprisingly informative. They're easy to make and can produce a lot of useful discussion among your family members, including kids. So I recommend this simple tool to you. Here's an address of where you can read how to make a structural map of your home or your multi-home family. The fifth resource I want to point out to you, uh, you may have heard of before, you may actually have used this one. It's called a family mission statement. Families can be extraordinarily complicated. They're essential for people's welfare and happiness. They're the fundamental unit of our society as the health of our families go, so does the health of our whole society. Family mission statements are thoughtful, brief, um, usually one page statements by the leaders of a family saying, this is what we're about in this family, and this is where we're going, and this is what our values are. It takes a lot of thought, and family, family value and mission statements are particularly useful when you run into complicated problems like abortions or crime or people deserting or um, abuse, uh, financial problems. Using a mission statement can help keep everybody focused on what you're trying to do together as a group long term. Um, here's an address of where you can read how to make an effective mission statement. <clears throat> the last of six resources I want to point out to you is a video that I've made and a related article on my website about how to evaluate self-help information. There are books, bookshelves full of how-to books. I've created a couple of myself. There's all kinds of programs, classes, online, offline, uh, seminars, offering somebody's opinion about here's how you can fix this personal or relationship or family or parenting or financial or legal problem, self-help or mutual help. In my opinion, after 31 years of studying and providing self-help, there are some real key things that can separate useful self-help from superficial or even harmful self-help. So I encourage you to um, look at this brief video that summarizes at least my opinion. How can you evaluate self-help that you may select as to whether it's going to be really useful or whether it's a waste of your time? So these are some resources that if you're interested in strengthening your family, and improving its nurturance level, how everybody gets their needs met. Um, study the free educational articles in my website, sfhelp.org. They build on each other. Learn how to use family systems concepts and apply them in analyzing your own family system. 
it will help you spot problems which can lead to solutions. Uh, experiment with drawing a family genogram or sociogram including all three generations and including dead people that still may influence you genetically, financially, uh, through philosophically, and discuss your genogram with other members of your family. It's a real productive way of having a family meeting to talk about your common interests. So learn how to use a family genogram. Learn how to use a family structural map that will focus more on your own household or if you're a divorced family, on your two related households, can give you a lot of useful information and generate a lot of useful discussion. Consider uh, making a family mission statement and include the kids if you do. They have very insightful, useful ideas. Uh, look at the example that Stephen Covey has provided for us. It's a marvelous example, very inspiring. Finally, I encourage you to look at my video on how to evaluate self-help information. Separate the good stuff from the waste of time stuff. I hope you'll investigate some of these tools and put them to work for you and your children if you have any, and any descendants you may choose to create. Thanks for watching.